I decided to document everything that I'm doing along the way. Give me one second. So I decided to document everything I'm doing along the way. And you can hear the audio is not so great right now. And I'm going to walk through how to change that. I know the audio is horrible right now. So let's fix that first. Here's the audio. And to fix it, we have to do a few things. Few things. First of all, I'm only in the left ear. So what I need to do right off the bat is I have to go into this, which is the matrix. And now, boom, I'm doubled. Next thing that I like to do is I like to add the noise gate. I, if you look on the screen, you'll see that when I'm not doing anything. <coughs> now, the cool thing about an SM57, which is what this mic is, this is Shure SM57. And what's cool about it is that it is, you have to be super close on it. So when I cough, <coughs> if I just turn away from the microphone, you can usually get rid of most of it. And then that's where this noise gate comes in. See how right uh, down there? When I cough, uh, when I'm talking, you can see it go up and down. La 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 la. But it's when you're not talking that you'll use the gate. It's a super cardoid, and it's designed for like guitar amps and like really loud things. One of the things that I like about doing the gate first is that uh, from then on, as long as you don't go above the gated level, you can even have like a conversation if you set it up correctly. You can just turn the microphone towards something or towards away from something, I should say, like if... Uh, since it's such a directional mic, you know, watch how fast I drop up. Like, I am on top of the microphone. And watch me fall away when I pull the microphone away from myself. I think that's kind of cool as well. So, I have to be on top of the microphone in order to get any kind of sound. I wish there was a quick inverse. I'm using vMix, and I wish there was a quick button where I could just flip the overlay. I want to take the overlay this that you're seeing right here, and I want to flip it with the um, background. We're gonna have to get to the camera setting soon because there's a flicker in the camera and that's uh, something I think I know what I did. <laughs> and I gotta undo it. Down here, I can finally see that there's actually numbers and stuff. So I wanna put it like around 55, maybe 60. Let's see. And you can't click into that and put in an exact number. It would be cool if it could listen, like press a listen button. Do nothing. Like, just sit. That's my sitting face, by the way. That's my sitting dance. If you could just press a button and wait 10, 20 seconds, and it would figure out, like, where the level should be, ideally. Uh, that would be awesome. Check one, two, one, two. You can kind of hear it. Like it'll clamp down on your voice if you like. If, let's make it too. In order for you to hear me, I have to scream, and it cuts off really quick. I normally don't go that high. I don't even go this high. I like to have it have a natural kind of tail where it falls off, not some sharp. <coughs> See now it's in the mix. It's never going away. So you just slowly edge it up. Keep on. And you want to breathe a little, too. That I've noticed that. <laughs> I like to breathe because just natural breathing can sometimes throw it off completely. See what I mean? I'm breathing. You can hear it. There we go. Now it's, eh, it's close. It's okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compressor. Now, you're probably wondering, why don't you increase the volume yet? Uh, one of the reasons is I kind of know the settings already from doing this about a gazillion times because I always seem to redo the save it settings. Normally, I do my compressor about 7, 8 to 1, and I lower the threshold down uh, about 35, 40. I think this is about right. I'm going to add more gain now. So I'm going to gain this up. Check 1, 2, 1, 2. And then we should be able check one two. Now I don't I don't want it to be this loud. Like this is way too loud. Like this is nutty loud. And in fact, when you drive things, well, when I drive things this hot, it's causing problems. And I can hear myself in my headphones so badly I can't even talk. Blah. Somewhere around here. It's more of a natural level for me. Uh, add the compressor. So 
this is without and this is with and it tightens it like literally it compresses the sound and tightens it together before it was like now it's like no well at least that's the way i explain it uh eq i already know this from setting it previously i kind of like it a certain way i've done it a bunch of different ways and uh, i'm always fiddling with it one of the main things is that multiband eqs are cool uh the thing that would be nice on a multiband is being able to see the spectrum at the same time so there are certain multibands that like in ableton you can see the frequencies so you can actually shape the frequency the way you want uh this is from doing this into ableton and kind of memorizing the settings sort of kind of uh i Ooh, let me get rid of my face real quick. I roll off the top end. I give it a little bit of high and then uh, like do a little bump. And then I drop the bass. Drop the bass! Uh, and that's just... I think that's more for protection than anything else. Because my headphones aren't... Uh, they're good headphones. Except headphones can be deceiving when it comes to bass. So when you get into a room, it gets a different feel. Taking it out, uh, I'm, I don't have... I don't have a really deep... Boys. The EQ settings I kind of messed with in Ableton, and that's where I got it all from. Now, at this point, we've gone through all of the stuff that you need to do. Uh, I've put it everywhere. <laughs> Since it's a mono mic, I've clicked both sides. Dual mono is technically what it's called. Uh, if I was to get a second SM57, I'd need another input on my um personas i use the personas i1 and it has a single input so uh besides that problem even if i had it i could put two microphones and i could kind of put them off axis and when i talked you could get a stereo effect and what's cool is if you play with it for a while you can get a pretty decent sound it's not super easy though and i wouldn't I, if you want stereo get uh, the the Zoom, I found out, via firmware, can be turned into a USB device, and it's stereo. Uh, the problem is, what I'm talking about being right here on top of the mic, and then if I pull away, you don't hear anything. Actually, I've got to work on this. Give me one second. That noise gate needs to go a little bit higher. From usage, you kind of can see... See, there's people in the background talking, so I want to make sure that I don't pick them up accidentally, and this mic's perfect for that. This mic, you'd hear their whole conversation. It's not a good mic by comparison for, um, like, isolation. Uh, this is a great mic uh, up close in stereo. Uh, you should put a windscreen on it, though. It seriously pops. This is pre-production for Five Live. And Five Live is my show that's going to be five minutes, whenever. It's going to be once a day, once a month, 21 times a day, 24 times a day, even more, I, 50 times a day when I go completely insane. It's going to be five minutes of live. What we're doing right now is what Gary Vaynerchuk calls document, don't create. I'm just documenting my journey. Uh, I bought equipment. I use software. I paid for that. Actually... I won this, this this software I'm using right now. I won it. It's pretty amazing. I did own a version, but I, I, I won a higher version. And the, and where I want it, Streaming Media West, and I'm going there in a couple of days. For the audio, with the gate, it takes a little bit of fine-tuning. It's not a specific exact science right away. You've got to have some interactions with your environment. you got to sneeze. I mean, sneezing helps because then you're like, achoo, and then you look at the meter and you go, oh, that just a little bit, a little bit, it would have been perfect. So anyway, back to where we were doing the audio, noise gate, channel mixer, enable compressor, EQ, general. I might actually take this volume just a little bit higher. Yeah, something like that. Makes it easier on me. I don't have to kind of crowd the mic quite as much. Now, now that I made that gain adjustment, you need to make sure that your gate doesn't get thrown off because you've added more sound. And I, I haven't seen the audio block, so I don't... So this is where 
knowing how the audio comes in and goes through the system is important because if it comes in and goes to a gate first, then you don't have to worry about the gain structure because the gain structure comes after the gate and blah, 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 audio stuff. What I've done, I'm using an NDI and I'm uh, screencasting, I guess is what people call it. It's a desktop capture using NDI. Desktop capture works good on it on vMix. NDI works a little bit better. It's a little smoother. I like the way it works a little bit more. I could technically just grab the whole little box. See how this box moves? Give me one second. See how this box moves? I could technically come down to vMix and right mouse click and change it just to this single screen. Now the problem is then I don't have like an active workspace. So when I go to the next one, the other one deleted it and I have to do it again. Whereas if I keep an active workspace, I can do other stuff as well. On this one, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this part here and this part here. Now, it depends on if you ever think you're going to use the top and the bottom. Now, currently I have one input one camera, one microphone, one input. So if you're on HD Basic, my recommendation is that you just go in and you change it right on this screen itself. But if you don't have, if you have something more than HD Basic, the more advanced option is to go to General, create a virtual input, and then you close this one, and then you open that one. So now this is my virtual input. It doesn't affect the original input at all. Anything I do here is completely separate. Everything is cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into position and I'm gonna do Y and I'm gonna do Y. Now what's funny is because of the way that camera works, I didn't actually lose anything. They use the extra space to put on all the data. They didn't put it over top of the screen. It's kind of like a combination of both worlds. So uh, let's look at the original and then let's look at the modified version. Now, it's got checkerboards because we're in the, uh, whatchamacallit menu, settings menu. But when we go back to the main screen, it'll have black bars on the top and the bottom, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, the other thing we need to do while we're in here, which is yeah, I made my voice go crazy, is that we have to do a, uh, do, 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 a color adjust, and we need to do a white balance. Now, right here, I have my tiny card, hold it up, hit white balance, white, white balance, <laughs> let's try this, oh, dope, so if you look, if you look over there, uh, up in the corner, there's a checkbox that says use source settings. And I don't want the source settings. I want to change it. That's the whole point to creating the virtual input. We have the original one, which will look different than this. So let's go to the white balance. This is a gray card. Pick the gray card. And I don't love it. I'll tell you right now. Uh, but let me check. Yeah, I have tinted glasses on. So I just wanted to check it. It's too red. So sometimes what I do is I try to find something in the room or something nearby that should work. And you know what's interesting? I think right over here will work great. Yeah, right there. Yep, pretty close. It's got an odd coloring. Let me take some of this red out. Yeah, that looks better. A little undersaturated, a little bit more saturation. And again, I'm a little hot, like saturation wise. Take, check the blue out a little. Green, green. There we go. And then let's just do auto. That should squash the blacks down a little bit more. And one thing that you can do that helps me sometimes is you can zoom in. That's my face. Uh, I didn't want my face. Uh, there we go. I wanted to see the black. So 
I just changed the position and then I'm going to go back into the color adjust and you can go into the black and the higher you make it go you can see starting to lose detail so I want to go too high and then the audio uh, on the auto white I should pick a different position grab me and it actually looks really good for me like you have to understand that like I'm not really good at color science don't tell anybody it's hard to whisper on uh, reset all. Oh. Now, there's a new feature in vMix that allows you to undo a mistake. Except, I don't think, yeah, it doesn't show up. Yeah. What I need to do now is take away the top and the bottom again. And the Y2. And I'll be honest, right now is when I wish I had a dial. I have dials, but I don't have it hooked up to kind of dial it in. Because holding the mouse and going up and down is a pain. And I'm not a big fan of going up. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of dialing stuff in with numbers. Like, I, I don't know. I just like eyeballing it better. I know that probably sounds stupid. I should probably just type in numbers. Let me look at the color again. <laughs> not so good. Not awful. Not great. So what I might do is bring a little of this in, a little of that in. Take away some of the saturation, desaturate it a little. Um, no. What's cool is you get to watch as I adjust it. I kind of like it here. And what's funny is you can see the original camera right here. And down below, you can see the adjusted image. Now what we're going to do is get out of here. Let's switch over to that. Let's get out of here. And I will get rid of that. So now we've gotten the camera and we've gotten the audio. Two things. Two things set up. Now what we make got to make sure to do is save. Okay. Now I've got a camera and I've got audio. I've put it on a bendable arm. And what's funny is with this camera, uh, it, it came with this frame. The one that I'm using right now, it came with it. And all I did uh, was it also came with this bicycle mount. And I took the bicycle mount and I attached it. And boom, it's now sitting on my microphone. And I have it running over to my capture device. Capture device. Wow. That's crazy that that works. <laughs> There's the capture device. Uh, and it gets fairly hot, so what I make sure to do is get airflow on both sides of it. And then that goes over to a powered, powered USB hub. So when I'm ready to turn it off, I just turn off the power USB hub. Uh, when I'm ready to go, now I'll be able to press a button, hook up the camera, hopefully it'll have battery charge, and I can record anytime I want. Boom, done. Oh, the one thing I forgot to say is that I have a ring light off in the distance, and I have it on the lowest light setting, and it seems to work pretty good. I mean, the background needs some serious work. I mean, the behind the scenes, I mean, we're deep, deep behind the scenes right now. This was the behind the scenes for Five Live. So go edit that, man. Make it happen.